Professional climber Rob Parker said this about climbing. In a sense, everything that is exists to climb. All evolution is a climbing towards a higher form. Climbing for life as it reaches towards the consciousness, towards the spirit. We have always honored the high places because we sense them to be the homes of gods. In the mountains there is the promise of something unexplainable. A higher place of awareness, a spirit that soars. So we climb, and in climbing there is more than a metaphor, there is a means of discovery. More than 50 years ago, a small group of dedicated citizens began a climb that has brought us to where we are today. This group had no trail markers to go by, no road map. They didn't know where the pinnacle was, or where the pitfalls were up ahead, or realistically even where to begin. But begin they did, the way so many things begin in higher education, with the formation of a committee. The East Side Committee for a Community College was co-chaired by Betty Shadeen and Richard Deitch, and both would work tirelessly for the college. While they were the first, dozens more would join. Interested citizens such as Sed and Betty Stewart, educators from local school districts, such as then superintendent of the David Douglas School District, Floyd Light, Lee Irwin, publisher of the Gresham Outlook, former Governor Barbara Roberts, and her husband, former representative Dr. Frank Roberts, all came on board and began the long climb. They climbed because they saw the need for a college in the East County, and they wanted it to be their college. Early in the climb, they immediately encountered hazards both large and small. Approval for the college was secured just prior to the Oregon State Legislature putting a moratorium on funding new community colleges. Land disputes and boundary issues became a common bone of contention. And the Portland School Board took a hardline stance against the formation of a new East Side College. In fact, it was Portland's heavy-handed stance that may have given the East Side Committee the boost it needed. Legend has it that during a meeting between Portland and the East County educators, a member of the Portland School Board suggested that the East County should leave the conduct of education to the professionals in Portland. This had the reverse effect. From then on, the founders became more determined than ever to successfully open their own college. From land purchases and securing a president, to voting for an operating budget and a college board, to finding qualified faculty and staff, the climb in those early days was more than anything a series of firsts. The first ASG, the first ribbon cutting, the first school newspaper, the first theater and music productions, the first athletic team. And by the time 1967 rolled around, the Wagon Train College began settling down in the former Strawberry Fields to take its permanent place as East County's college. The students would respond. Enrollment for the 67-68 academic year topped 9,000 students. The college and its employees continued to climb. Construction of the permanent buildings marked the time in the 70s. And with enrollment topping more than 16,000 by 1973, expansion was already on people's minds. This resulted in a successful bond campaign bringing $6 million to the college, which went towards the Allied Health Building, an aquatic center, and additional vocational spaces. With the permanent facility in place, the college also began the climb towards becoming the best educational and community resource it could be, to helping East County residents with the moving ahead workshops during the recessions of the late 70s, to turning the Jazz Festival into the nation's largest event of its kind, to opening up a small business development center, to hosting the annual Strawberry Festival. The college began attracting national attention from awards earned by faculty to nationally recognized keynote speakers at events, to the events themselves that brought tens of thousands of people to the campus. By the late 80s, the campus was generating close to $30 million in economic benefit to just the East County alone. Even then, they too saw their economic crisis. Ballot Measure 5 passed in the early 90s, which scaled back and shifted funding of community colleges to the state government. With nearly 30,000 students enrolled, the college had to find ways to adapt to the needs of its community and position itself for the future. Because there will always be students, students who need education and credentials and degrees, and need what Mount Hood Community College has to offer. And here we are now, five decades later, Many summits already scaled, but now looking at a new climb. With a fond look backwards and a salute to the hard work of so many over the past 50 years, we must also turn our gaze forward to the next 50 years. What do we want to be? 
Where do we want to go? We also may not have trail markers or a road map that lead us where we need to be, but that's okay. It's in our history and in our culture to achieve when others thought we would fail, to dare when others counseled caution, to climb when others thought we would fall. Mount Hood Community College, the next 50 years begins today.